Hi, I'm Ollie Barrett and over the last few weeks I've been travelling the UK and meeting the chief executives of some of Britain's leading small and medium-sized public companies. I've heard about their journeys, their challenges along the way and crucially I've asked them all about the process and the reality of becoming and being a listed company. Why did you choose to float the company? We knew that we had virgin territory here that we could really exploit. Why did we go public? That's an interesting question. Um, obviously, we were going well and thought we could go even further and faster. But the honest answer is, was because we could. And if you can reflect and think back to the spring of 2005, companies were joining AIM by the score. And you know, for me, it was the pinnacle of my business career's achievement to be at the helm of a company that could join the public market. When you talk about listing the company, I get a sense of pride in your voice. Oh, enormous pride. It was uh, for a whole host of reasons. Um, I'm glad that we listed. I think it catapulted us on our journey. It's not only my pride, I've, not, I've, I've seen this throughout the whole organization. All the people that have joined us, um, they have pride in being part of a small growing company that's in the public arena that they might read about in the press from time to time. And it's been one of the really strong sort of beneficial um, uh, impacts of being in the public company space. So how about the benefits and other things that get unlocked when you're a listed company? What do you notice? I think the, the, the most interesting one is just the rigour it gives us as a business. Oh. Um, I actually really enjoy the shareholder engagement part of my role mm -hmm. um, because you're held yeah, Why to do you enjoy that? Because that could sound a bit stuffy, a bit corporate. But you're held to account, which is, oh. the, which is the really, for me, is the really interesting part is, um, you know, shareholders want to see from us greater levels of organic growth. I mean, we've had good levels of organic growth, but we should be able to push that higher. Mm. They want to see us take the business international mm. and they want us to have higher levels of recurring revenue. So to have those consistent themes, where are you on that journey? Why have, have you or haven't you moved that forward? I personally find that you know, quite liberating. It, gives, it makes sure that you know, I'm holding myself to account and it also puts a rigour into the business. And on that listed company status, anything else that you feel gives you that extra strength or power being in that position? I think it gives us real credibility in the market. You know, we're a yeah. company that's got, um, especially in the current climate where it's about business continuity. You know, we're well established, people can see that. Um, we haven't got any debt. Uh, we're very cash generative. And also, if we can find something that we think will really add to the to the future growth strategy of the business, yeah. we've got access to funding. Should we want to should we want to use that? Why did you want, or some might ask, need to float the business? What did it represent, and what did it unlock? Very good question. So, so there, there are a number of reasons, but if you think about the context, we've had the, essentially the same private equity investors from 2002 through. So we raised no new funding after 2002, not really after 2001, to be mm. honest. Um, so all the way through to 2016, there'd been no new funding rounds, um, and we had the same PE guys. Uh -huh. And of course, private equity is not in, normally in, in for 15 years. And you know, clearly they, they needed to realise that investment and, and move on. But equally, we didn't really want to just sell the business, and we could see it had a lot more potential going mm. forward. And um, you know, we, we were keen to, to, to look at um, inorganic growth to do more M&A. Mm. PE investors we had at the time weren't interested in doing mm. more tech business and certainly not more uh, M&A with this platform. So it provided an exit for the PE guys I see. and it gave us the, the platform to, to roll forward and, and, oh. and keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, coronavirus has interrupted the, yes. the deal flow to some extent. Yeah. Um, but it does give us a platform to be able to go out and buy much larger businesses than we could have done yeah. through PE investment. Because of those deeper pockets. Well, yeah, absolutely, because, because the process of raising money on the public markets is, is much more straightforward than the process of raising money through PE. Yeah. And I think also it's raised our profile significantly, which I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting it to have such a difference. And what's so good about that aspect of it? I think for us it's about winning larger deals all the time with larger customers. Yeah. And um, you know, that's the key to long-term growth and success. Oh. You took a big decision to list the business, to float the business. For sure. Tell me why you chose to do that. Fundamentally, it was to raise cash to grow the business because it was, it was, it was capital intensive yeah. and the growth, you know, we, we'd be growing every year since inception, already at plus 50%. Yeah. Um, and it got to a point where we, just, we needed the cash. Yeah. Um, but I'd say most importantly, uh, it was to retain control of the business. Yeah. We didn't want the external influence. Um, in terms of what else being a listed company unlocks, 
what would you what would you reflect so, on? So I think the the reputation, the credentials of being a, being a London listed yeah. public business are fantastic. It's definitely helped us expand our, our you know our, our counterparties. So yeah. we've got some some additional banks we've onboarded. Probably improve the terms of those banks. Yeah. Um, help help us go into you know foreign jurisdictions and win business there because it, it's, it's probably the best stamp in, in UK business, isn't it? You know, UK yeah. listed business. Yeah. And I think also, obviously, is, is, is sharing the, the rewards with the team. You know, yeah. collective ownership is, is a big part of our culture and enabling them to come on the journey and share the rewards is, is, is a huge benefit. I wanted to ask you a bit about being a listed company and the benefits that that unlocks. So I, I'm a great fan of being listed uh, because, believe it or not, I actually believe it's possible to take a longer term approach um, on the stock market. Because anyone who uh, basically is, is not happy with things uh, can uh, sell. Yeah. Um, and for us, uh, in the years that I've been a listed company director, which is since 2004, uh, we've always been able to raise money when we've needed. Uh, and then more recently, we've uh, been able to buy back uh, shares to the tune of um, 81 million uh, and, and give that money back to the shareholders. By and large, I think it's a place to be and I would expect that um, over the next few years, possibly the pendulum might well swing back from the private equity world, um, but we shall see.